Praise the Lord, everybody. Lift one hand towards heaven as a point of contact with the Holy Spirit. Omnipotent power of mercy and grace. Minister to us this morning. Let the heavens open up on your people. Let your name be glorified. Heal the sick. Set the captives free. Give us a word from above. Father, give us a word in season. In the name of Jesus. Amen. With the knowledge of what we know, put your hands together and really magnify the Lord. Give God glory. Hey. Shadirirus. Ziraba katayiriba. Zaro shayaraba. Reko tali brodusa. Narerosh. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. First of all, want to celebrate, appreciate the leadership of this house. We bless the Lord for Pastor Bjorn and Pastor Modili for the grace of God on their life, for the call of God on their life. He who began a good work in them will surely continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against them will prosper. Every mouth that rises against them in judgment is condemned already. The quality of your life is always determined by who you follow, who is your leader. Nations are blessed or cursed because of leadership. The anachronism, the oxymoron of Africa is, the, is that it is the wealthiest continent with the poorest people. And the only thing is that it all falls to leadership. Much of Europe really have nothing. They just take what's in other people's nation and take and turn around. It's interesting to find that a country like Belgium, which is less than 30 million people, practically owns Democratic Republic of Congo. Democratic Republic of Congo really, 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 if they walk in the fullness of their destiny, should only be second to the United States of America. It would probably lead the United States because you cannot live in the world without you, with <laughs> Democratic Republic of Congo. But they've had leadership problem. Was there to preach, met a member of the United Nations, uh, and who has been there since 1961. Somebody likes them to be in bondage. I take this little time to talk because you must never take leadership for granted. You must never take leadership for granted. So let's celebrate our leaders one more time. Are you awake this morning? Are you ready? Somebody say, I'm ready. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated First Samuel chapter 17, verses 49 to 51. This morning, I came to announce to somebody that you are rising as a giant killer. I said, you will be a giant killer. You will be a giant killer. This is one of the most popular passages in scripture ever. People know it even before they are born again. Now, was a little Muslim boy whose name was Ahmed. I knew the story of David and Goliath without being born again. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of its sheath and killed him, and cut off his hair with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. This morning I believe that I'm speaking to giant killers. I like you to announce I'm a giant killer. Amen. Say it like you mean it, I'm a giant killer. Amen. Our world is full of a lot of challenges. In fact, as a new word to describe the battles of our world, it is called VUCA, V-U-C-A. Our world is full of VUCA, V for volatility, U for uncertainty, C for complexity, and A for ambiguity. 
the coming years is going to be full of volatility. It's not going to just be uh, in Israel fighting with uh, the Hamas or in Europe, uh, Russia fighting Ukraine. There's going to be a lot of volatility in our world. There's going to be a lot of uncertainty, complexity, and um, ambiguity. But at this kind of a time, God is about to raise a generation, a generation of giants. Not just giants, but giant killers. Giant killers who don't just, who, can, who don't accept everything that is thrown at them. And listen, giant killers don't start as giant killers. They start as people who have faced one battle or the other. I took this subject this morning as the Lord laid it on my heart because this is the year that you are going to manifest the greatest grace. Amen. You're going to walk in the greatest favor, Amen. the greatest blessing. In the name of Jesus, you are going to manifest the power of God this year. Amen. You will be at your best. But, you see, but for you to be a giant killer, you got to understand giant killers see the potential reward if they kill the giant even before it happens. Giant killers take those around them to a higher level. When you kill the giant, everybody around you rises. Your family is going to rise. Your children will rise. Everyone connected to you will rise. People may not know you now, but when you slay your Goliath, there will be a song in town. There will be a testimony. Giant killers face the challenge with a higher purpose. They know that if I bring down this my Goliath, Testimony will follow. Glory will follow. David said, what shall be done for the man who kills this man? Who kills this Goliath? So there's a higher purpose. There's a higher testimony. Giant killers also don't listen to doubting critics. People will rise. They will criticize you. If you fail, they will criticize. If you succeed, they will fail. They will, they will criticize you. If you do anything, somebody will talk. But you need to just let them say it. Say what they like, but you are going to have a testimony. Criticism only hurts when it comes from people you don't expect it. From higher people, people who are above you, who should celebrate you. And now they are criticizing you and mocking you. But this morning, I came to announce to somebody, you are about to rise. I said, you are about to rise. You are about to become a king. King over situations. Victory will manifest in your life. The hand of God will be upon your life. But let me say this to you. David was not a king when they anointed him king. The anointing to be king is to reveal the potential. We only knew the king when he now took on Goliath. You see, you could have been ordained. You can carry the anointing. And today people pursue anointing. They grab the anointing. They draw the anointing. But until you face that giant and bring it down, you have no introduction yet. So listen, in 2024, God is going to allow some things to face you. Not because he wants to destroy you. But that thing <laughs> will introduce your destiny. I prophesy on you that elevator which Satan thought would take you down will take you to the next level and the next level and the next level and the next level in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a good amen. David brought into manifestation the call of God upon his life. You see, because Goliath shows up, he thinks he wants to destroy you, but he doesn't know it is part of God's plan to reveal what he has for you, to bring forth the grace in you, the destiny in you, the blessing upon your life, the grace upon your life. You cannot see a place like this, the work that God is doing in Koza, and you just think somebody just had an idea. This is not an idea. Someone had to face Goliath. Not one, not two, not three. And the more you face, the greater your destiny. So whatever trouble it is, don't despise that problem. Change your thinking. And if you are facing a Goliath, the good news is you are up for a Goliath promotion. You are up for a giant testimony. You will not be overwhelmed. You will not be stopped you will have a testimony. 
So what do you do? Be aggressive. Be aggressive and take on that giant and say, hey, you came against me with sword and shield, but I am coming in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it. And they are safe. Don't give the devil any space. Don't give him a chance. Dismantle his lies. In 2024, take your stand. Announce to yourself, I'm going to do well. I'm going to excel. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to overcome. And when you finish with Goliath, ladies and gentlemen, I have news for you. There will be some more Goliaths. There will be some more giants. Because Goliath has four brothers. He has four brothers. Somebody ask your neighbor, are you ready? Amen. Second Samuel 21 from verse 15 to 22. We want to lay the foundation here. After David had taken Goliath, you know, David's action was so prophetic. He picked five stones. Somebody say five stones. So he only had to use one stone at Goliath, but he kept the other four. Because Goliath has four brothers. Ah, and those four brothers, they will be your next step, and your next step in 2024, and your next step, I say again, and your next step, the first of the four brothers, so we count him to be number two, Second Samuel 21 verse 15, when the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants with him went down and fought against the Philistines, and David was tired. Then Ishbi Benob, who was one of the sons of the giants, and the weight of his spear was 300 shekels. He was bearing a new sword. He thought to kill the man who, from whom Jesus will come. And something is trying to stop your generation. Something is trying to stop your manifestation. And this guy came when David was tired. Did you see there? The Bible says when David was tired. So this person targets him to stop destiny. But I prophesy, your destiny shall not be stopped. Yeah. Wicked opposition will die for you. Yeah. They try to resist your passage to the next level, but God will stop them. Yeah. I prophesy to somebody's life today, opposition will be overruled. Yeah. I say again, opposition will be overruled. Yeah. Their weapon will fail. You have come this early morning to this place. I declare and decree every giant you face this year will push you to the next level. And the next level. And the next level. And the next level. And the next level. Shout amen three times. Giant number three, verse 18. Now it happened afterward that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibekai. These guys have some mean names, man. You know what I'm saying? Then Sibekai the Hushatite killed Saf, who was one of the sons of the giants. When you take away H from his name, Saf, his name becomes Sap. Sap is anything that's trying to sap you, that's trying to drain you, that's trying to create such tiredness that you begin to say, I'm even tired. I've given and he given. I've done all this. Ah, but I came this morning to let you know you will not be tired 2024 you will not be tired ah you are coming out of stagnation you will not be kept on the spot you are moving to greater things you are moving to favor this year you will move very fast i pray for you there will be progressive movements there will be productivity there will be meaningful achievement you will break new levels into new grounds, new grounds. Somebody scream new grounds. What you have never taken on before. If Saf thought he had sapped your energy, he has wasted his time. The oil of God, after 12 DG, the oil of God will come upon your life. You will find yourself with new energy, new strength, new power, new glory, new vision, new progress in the name of Jesus. Shout yes. Sit down, sit down. Now we go to giant number what? If you can't go lie at his number four. Another one, his name was Eli, Eli, like, let's go to the scripture. It says, now it happened. Again, there was war at Gob 
with the Philistines where Elhanan, and the son of Jaarare, Oregim, these guys, their names are mean. The Bethlehemite killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. The shaft of this guy's spear was like a weaver's beam. This particular one, this fourth one, his plan is to bring impossibilities in your way. And so you can't, you know, how you, you can't rise. How can you rise? Even where you've reached, you've exceeded your fathers. Who told you my father is my measurement? I came to let somebody know. Every impossibility you face in 2024, you are rising above it. You are rising above it. God will give you a breakthrough. I said a breakthrough. I said a breakthrough. You will be enlarged to the left, enlarged to the right, taking territories, possessing possessions in the name of Jesus. From the prophetic word given yesterday, the next six months will be more than your previous years. The next six months will be more than your previous years. Shout amen three times. Every impossibility you have known will turn around to possibility. In the name of Jesus. This guy is a hijacker of prophecies. But I prophesy on you the word, the prophecies that have been given into your life. If you can say amen, they shall not be aborted. They shall not be aborted. They shall not be aborted. You will not be denied of your possibilities. You will not be distracted from your possibilities. You will not be taken away from your possibilities. Shout amen three times. Sit down. Giant number five. So we have, we have the last stone now. We use the first one, Goliath, second one, third one, fourth one. The fifth one, second Samuel 21, verse 20, 20 to 22. Yet again there was war at God, where there was a man of great stature. This one is meaner than his older brother. He has six fingers, kilo day, on each hand, six toes on each foot, 24 in number. He also was born to the giant. This is the giant of defiance and the giant of abnormal problems. The worst problem in life is the one you can't understand. That's the worst problem. It's like the problem the, the, the apostles faced. They were handling a boat because the storm was awesome. Then they saw something moving on water. You see, they are fishermen. If push comes to shove, they'll jump out of the boat and swim home. But when they saw something moving on water in white cloths in the middle of the night, <laughs> which one is this? In the Greek language, what they were screaming was phantasma, 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 which means ghost, ghost. The worst problem is the one you don't understand. But this morning, that giant with six fingers, six toes, abnormalities, abnormal battles, abnormal sickness, abnormal disease assigned against you to defy your anointing, to defy your calling. You shall overcome. 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 In the name of Jesus. Some must scream, I shall overcome. 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 What they thought will take you down will push you up. What they thought would take you down will push you up. I declare again, what they thought would take you down will push you up. Somebody scream, I'm going higher. I'm going higher. This morning I prophesy you are going higher. You will not be taken down. In the name of Jesus, shout amen with power. 
because of the brevity of time, I will take the blessings of facing your giant, I'll take it and use it to prophesy into your life. Because when you face these giants, and listen, you gotta face them. Don't run away from them. Stay in the battle. Win the battle. When anything comes, always remember, they that be for us. I'm all than they that are against us. No weapon formed against us will ever prosper. They will fight you, but they will not overcome you. A thousand will fall on your right, 10,000 on your left. With your eyes only, you will see the reward of the wicked. Listen, when you face giants, don't say, God, what is this? I'm a tithe, I give offering. No, God is giving you a chance. One of the mystery of life in theology is why is the devil still around? Why can't God in his sovereignty just package the guy and throw him in hell? But you see, we need punch bag with which to become fit. So when we finish here, we can fit there. That's why they are around here. So the giant that has shown up will push you into your breakthrough. Push you into your testimony. Bring you into a new level, new season, new blessing in the name of Jesus. When the enemy comes, when the giants come, one of the things is that they, they make you to receive sevenfold blessing. Ah! David killed a lion. Nobody knew him. He killed a bear. They didn't know. They poured oil on him in his father's sitting room. Nobody knew. But when he killed Goliath, by evening, they have composed a song. Ah, they had composed a song. It changed every... Ah. Within 24 hours, the army of Israel was now behind a 17-year-old boy. 17. He's not qualified to go to war according to the book of Leviticus. You have to be 20 to go to war. I stand on this altar today and I prophesy on your life. Sevenfold favor, sevenfold blessing, sevenfold turnaround is coming to your house in the name of Jesus. Shout amen with fire. When you kill your giant, demons will be on the run. Kilo Shele, they look, you look, the Bible says everybody began to run the moment Goliath fell. Ah, the remaining soldiers, they didn't wait. They began to run. I prophesy on somebody this morning. Ah! Every strong man that have come against your household, come against your life, they fall for your sake. They fall for your sake. You have the victory. In the name of Jesus. When you kill your giants, associations change. That same day, 1 Samuel chapter 17, the last verse, and verse 1 and 2 of chapter 18, Jonathan said, hey, can I be your friend? I mean, this guy is a shepherd, smelling like goat. And now the prince wants to be his friend, wants to connect with him. He said, can I, can I be your friend? Ah, that's what happens when you kill giants. Where they say you will not reach, you will get there. Yeah. When you kill giants, where they say you never enter, you will enter. Yeah. And I don't know who it is, but you will rub shoulder with royalty. Yeah. You will sit with royalty. Yeah. And you'll be like them, like them, like them, like them, like them, like them, like them. In the name of Jesus. When you kill your giants, you change in appearance. The Bible says the cloth of David was removed and Jonathan put his coat upon him. Ah, from whatever bend down boutique to something looking better, not just a coat, not just a suit, but suitable. Suitable suits. His appearance changed. By the time he showed up, everybody knew that levels have changed. I prophesy on you today, the giant that will push you to new levels, new appearance, receiving the name of Jesus. His financial status changed because he had been told, whoever kills Goliath will get half of the king's wealth. Hey! It is not how hard you work. It is what the giant introduced you to. 
one introduction of David by Goliath and his financial status changed. The king had committed himself. He has no choice. If he had 100 acres, party to 50, he's going to David. At 17, the guy became overnight millionaire because he faced a giant. Look at me. Other soldiers were running away. He was running to the giant. Ah! Talo shekai rebos. Rikatele rebos. Some things you may face this year. It's not because God hates you. But God is looking at you and saying, I'm about to promote this girl. I'm about to promote my son. I have heard your prayers. I have seen your cry. I've seen your waiting. I'm about to raise your level. Finance is coming into your hand. Money is coming into your hand. Breakthrough is coming to your house. Look at me. There's a level of financial breakthrough you can't even share with your friends. Because if you share it, they'll look at you like, how? How? But you see, they didn't face the Goliath you faced. So this morning, I speak into somebody's life. I declare into your life the kind of money with which to carry your mission in life, with which to touch lives, make a difference. Receive in the name of Jesus. When I went to, when I went to seminary, 50 years ago I went to seminary, January, January 2, 1974. God called me to be an evangelist. All these years, the church I went through made us to be pastors, but I've always carried the passion to be an evangelist. So last year, I held my first crusade because now I've launched out my equipment. Bought my equipment for half a million dollars. How many people do you tell that your crusade equipment is half a million dollars? People who came to set it up, they said, this is more than Reinhard Bonke's equipment. I said, I've never seen his equipment. They said, this is more than his own. Now who know me before? Now who see me before? And when it was time for the cruise, I didn't wait for anybody's offering. I put down my own 700 million naira. Gave the people of Ikorodu 50,000 packs of rice, 50,000 packs of beans, 50,000 packs of gari, 120,000 noodles, 10,000 bottles of oil, 30,000 soap, 3,000 buckets, no, did I say 3,000? 10,000 buckets with which to carry it. I can't even remember everything. 75,000 clothing. Medicine worth 300 million. We shut down the city. We couldn't handle the crowd. Then I now saw the reason why he waited. He didn't let me hold the crusade until the right time. Pastors in town said, are we not going to take over? I said, not here. When I give one million naira offering, when I go say now when I do am, this one is the Lord's doing. Yeah. It's a different way. It's called Christ Compassion Crusade. Not arrogance, but I believe that's the reason He gave me the companies to make a difference. Do what had never been seen. Everyone was saying, "What is this?" The medical day in Korodu Stadium was too small, 50,000 showed up. We hired 100 doctors, paid, him, paid everyone who. We hired 140 pharmacists, 50 nurses. Oh, I didn't tell you, we took over Ikorodu General Hospital to do surgery. The, the hospital was too small, we built our own theater. We did 287 surgeries in six days. Yeah. While we were waiting, some people who went to government hospital in Lagos, one girl, her face became double. I can't remember the medical word. Double. Her, her, her face came out. It became double. The government said, you must pay for your surgery. The guy said, I'm an orphan. He said, go to 
Matthew Ashimolo CCRW. She came, we did the surgery for her. 287. Radio went to interview some people. One guy said, when I went to the hospital for surgery, they said it's 150,000. I said, I managed to gather 70. They said, when you get 150, come. He said, I can't get 150. They said, go and die. You are going to do exploit. You will shake systems. You will change your generation. Everything I'm sharing with you today, Pastor Corey was there. He saw so about five of the six days. I have, even myself, I'd never seen anything like it. The medical day, I panicked. Pastor Biodo, I panicked. The stadium was too jammed. How can 100 doctors see 50,000 people? We had 10,000 glasses. 10,000. The optometrist line was so long. Whole families are, who among you need glasses? They say, all of us. When I know they see for a family. Tell your neighbor, it's a new day. It's a new day. I lay hand on somebody here today. I prophesy, God will use you. You'll be a giant killer. You'll be a giant killer. Your giants will introduce you to testimony, to glory, to favor, to lifting. In the name of Jesus, shout amen three times. Power of darkness was broken. Kings, three kings, founded the three towns adjoining. We were ministering to 3,150 villages. We paid Lagos State for 15, 15 of their buses to bring people. We paid Lagos State staff who were given, oh, the governor was first class. But we had to give his, the, the government workers who came to help us. It cost me 20 million to give them stipend every day. But it's okay. Is the church now giving? The oxymoron of the whole thing is that that same you pastor of Yodon, when I was in seminary, I was always hungry. Never had money. I had to walk, walk five kilometers from seminary to town to buy a, a can of, of raw rice to take back to cook. I just didn't have money. I struggled. You were asking me yesterday, why do I eat once? That's where I learned it. It was by force. Pastor Modley was asking me, why do you eat once? I said, I learned it. I, I, I thought it was 30 years ago, and now I remember. It was from there. there. You want to eat, but there's nothing to eat. Now I go back with 50,000 bags of rice, 50,000 bags of beans, 50,000 gari. Ah, we overwhelmed the city. Overwhelmed the city. We were paying all those doctors. Paid all the nurses, paid the pharmacists. I lay hand on somebody here today. You will exceed your generation. You will exceed your fathers. You will exceed your generation. In the name of Jesus. Shout amen with power. When you become a giant killer, you enter a new sphere of influence. David became an influence. He became a voice. In fact, his brothers who were hating him before now had to regard and respect him. I lay hand on you today. God will change your sphere of influence. Your sphere of oppression. In the name of Jesus. He became an instant celebrity for a long time. We charismatics used to resist being celebrities. What's wrong with that if it is for God? Daniel 12, 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars. You will be God's star. You will brighten the, cl the cloud of Nigeria. They will hear from you. Ah, God will raise you. You will be a testimony. In the name of Jesus, shout yes. When you kill the giant, David took the, the sword of Goliath. It became his souvenir. All those weapons, they have been rolling out. 
against you shall become your souvenir. They will bow to your God. They will bow to your grace. They will bow to your anointing. In the name of Jesus, they will bow to your God. In the name of Jesus, this morning I prophesy on you. When you kill a, a giant, you become distinguished from among your peers. Distinguished from among your peers. You stand out because they say, that's the man who killed the giant. What your fathers did in 70 years, in 80 years, you will do it in the next six months. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, when David killed Goliath, lesser enemies began to disappear. Ah, when they saw their champion was dead, the Bible says they ran. Enemies you know and the ones you don't know that are raising their voices, they'll be on the run. 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 In Jesus' name. When you kill a giant, the Bible says. Any man who kills this giant, his family shall no longer pay tax. That is uncommon exemption. Ranushai, Rikutala, Reruskaya. You are exempted from early death. You are exempted from, from paralyzing diseases. You are exempted from issues of life. Uncommon exemption. Uncommon exemption. Uncommon exemption will rise in your house. Uncommon exemption extends to your family, extends to your children. Uncommon exemption will cover your household in the name of Jesus. Shout yes. Yes, yes, yes. When you kill a giant, <laughs> there is terror, you become a terror to the enemy. Terror. That, well, they, well, they just need to hear your name and they are panicking. Second Samuel chapter 5 verse 17. And when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, rumor no go, just rumor. And when the Philistines heard, they just heard a rumor that David had been anointed again because he was anointed three times. That man is dangerous. He was the only one anointed three times for one job. Three times. For one job. And when the Philistines heard, ah, David became a terror. I lay hand on you today. Rikayarosha. You'll be a carrier of the presence of God. A carrier of the glory of God. Everywhere you enter is power. Everywhere you enter is anointing. Demons will be on the run. Systems will be shaken. Systems will be shaken. Nations will be shaken. Systems will be shaken. Nations will be shaken. Terror to the enemy. Terror to the enemy. Terror to the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Shout Amen. Lekoshadia. Rekozolavaria. Makate kosotoraba. Raskeboshka diskalirabo. Look at me. You have sacrificed too much, so I'm not going to take time. I have so many of the word I wanted to speak into your life, but just say amen to this. Because the giants have fallen and you have risen, receive divine honor. Receive exponential promotion. Look at me, look at me. 17 year old boy was leading the army of Israel. Receive exponential promotion. Receive a sense of accomplishment. Look at me, the worst thing in life is to have a sense of not accomplishing, feeling empty, and seeing your colleagues rise. Receive accomplishment. I lay hand on somebody here. Look at me. 
What makes Nigeria not to be able to discriminate against you? They can't discriminate against Pastor Biono, Pastor Modili. They can't discriminate against Pastor Koridi. It's because they carry problem-solving skills. Do you know if you take this couple and plant them in Burkina Faso, they will change the nation around because of the thing they carry. From today, it shall manifest in your life. It shall manifest. It shall manifest. It shall manifest. When you kill the giant, you enhance your own resilience. Ah! David said, I've killed a lion. I've killed a bear. I don't know if you know grizzly bears. When a grizzly bear stands, it stands eight feet. Everyone runs at a bear. If he slaps your head, it is over. And David stood it. But today, he's facing Goliath. I prophesy on you. From today, ah, God will strengthen you. The storm will not shake you. You will go through the storm. You will rise above the storm. You'll be an inspiration to others. In the name of Jesus, shout amen with power. When you kill Goliath, you will grow personally. From today, you will grow. Your courage will increase. When you kill Goliath, and they are looking for CVs of who to take over, you have a competitive advantage. From today, God is raising your profile. For the job you are going for in 2024, God is raising your profile. The business you want to do, God is raising your profile. From today, wisdom is coming on you. Your possibilities are expanding. Your possibilities are expanding. Your possibilities are expanding. Your possibilities are expanding. Are expanding. In the name of Jesus. Goliath and his brothers died. Look at me. I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving giants, the kind of giants I face. I'm not leaving them for my children and grandchildren. All of my life, I lived in tight places, single rooms, poor places. My father would always rent homes, houses where nobody wants. We lived on Joss Road, Kaduna, when it was a terrible place. I think it's still terrible, but that, this now, now is better than then. We lived on Bini Street, Joss Road, Obomosho Street, by the Co Village. By the Co Village was a village, now it's a town. My parents the other day saw light, I lied. It used to have grass hot. Only thing with zinc on it was the house we lived, belonging to his, a, a, a sergeant major in the army. But today, I'm not waiting. I'm the one paying for my grandchildren's schooling, all in private school in the United Kingdom. They're still four and eight, but I'm paying all their school fees, four of them. And then I've already bought 22 apartments for them. Don't be jealous, just say praise the Lord. So that Goliath and his four brothers will not have to rise again. On this altar, I declare, your generation will not know those giants. Your generation will not know those giants. You will know blessing. You will know favor. You will know dignity. You will know glory. You will stop the giants. In the name of Jesus. And finally, I can't go on anymore. Finally, the same guy ruled as a king. Ah, the Bible says he has made us kings and priests. You are called into dominion. You are a holy nation, a royal. We are the only people combining royalty and priesthood. Royal priesthood, just like David. Because David, the guy was dangerous. The entire place where priests will enter. He took their bread and ate. He said, uh, you know, <laughs> royal priesthood are speaking to your life today. Abuja will, Abuja will know there are kings. And they will not be able to kill you. 
my message last, kill, Chris, last Christmas was, who is trying to kill Christmas? Fear, Herod was so, ah, which other king did you say I've shown? Because he comes from a generation of killers. There are six Herods, and all of them are killers. Agrippa, and so on and so on. They are all killers. And this one, he said, hey, go, go and check where that king is so I can go and worship him. And when they didn't call, he killed all the babies. But you are a king in reigning. They will not be able to kill you. In 2024, you will excel. You will stand out. You'll be a blessing. Touch a generation. Make impact. Glorify the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Shout amen with fire. All those ministers were here, just stand here. Quickly, 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 I know the time is gone. Father, I lay hand of faith upon these ministers who have come to receive during this conference. Put your blessing on their work. Put your blessing on their ministry. Let grace rest on them. Let them enter new levels, new dimensions. Expansion! Every giant they meet, make them giant slayers. Giant killers. Taking territories. Increasing on every side. Fresh oil on their life. Fresh oil on their ministry. A change of season. A change of story. Anyone who have mocked you, mocked you for where you are, mocked you for even coming to a conference like this, they will see your testimony. They will hear your testimony. Glory will rest on your house. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise for them. Lord, I pray for every worker standing shoulder to shoulder to make the vision of this house happen. I pray for the workers in this church, all the workforce. I speak your blessing on their life. As they make the vision of this house happen, may their vision happen. May they prosper. May they increase. May they be lifted. May they prosper. May they increase. May they be lifted. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak into Koza today. About this time next year, we speak double, double, double. Double, double, double. Increase, increase, increase. Favor, favor, favor. Expansion to the left. To the right. Any giant they meet shall make their promotion. Shall push their promotion. Shall bring their lifting. Shall bring their testimony. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together and give God the biggest praise.